tickled pink. One morning, the Fat Controller told James to go to the Steamworks. You're going to have a new coat of paint, he said. James chuffed off as fast as his wheels could take him. I'll be the smartest reddest engine on the island of Sodor, he peeped. At the Steamworks, the workmen scraped off James's old coat. Then they put on a special pink paint. James was surprised. I'm not a pink engine, I'm a bright red engine, he pipped. Don't worry, James, said a workman. This is just the undercoat to keep the water out. James was soon covered from fender to firebox in pink paint. Then, before the workman could paint him red, the fat controller came hurrying by. I need you to pick up some children from my granddaughter's birthday party, he told James. But I'm not finished, James protested. I look silly in pink. James puffed as he set off for the station. Suppose I meet the other engines, they'll laugh at me. Then an idea flew into his funnel. James decided to hide whenever a steamy or diesel came by. Not long after, he saw Toby chugging along. I'll hide under this tree so he won't see me. When Toby had gone, James steamed on. He soon caught sight of Diesel. Oh no, he's sure to laugh, James thought. Very quickly, he hid behind some coal trucks until Diesel had passed. Then Gordon rattled down the track. James hid inside a tunnel, but Gordon whistled. Who's in the tunnel? Please move, I'm coming through. Poor James puffed out the other end. Gordon laughed. <laughs> now James was late. <laughs> I'm a story. I can't worry what the others think now. He puffed. He raced past Spencer and Henry. They stared in amazement, but James didn't care. When he got to Maithwaite, he saw the Fat Controller's granddaughter with her friends. They were all wearing pink. It's my favourite colour, she said. James was so happy, his boiler bubbled and he blushed. A lovely shade of pink. The island of Sodor is home to many engines of different sizes, shapes and colours. And they all have different jobs to do. Today it's time to meet Spencer. Spencer is a classy, metallic, silver steam engine. He belongs to the Duke and Duchess of Boxford and he pulls the Pulford coaches. Spencer doesn't live on the island, he only visits, which is a great relief to everyone, particularly Gordon. The other steamies get very tired of his boasting. Did you know? Spencer was once very rude to Thomas. He called him a toy tank engine. Spencer has lots of peep in his puff. He's loud, proud and a real show-off. Spencer is an express engine. He's even faster than Gordon. This is Spencer's funnel. It looks like a fin. It is short and curved so he can move fast. Spencer's paintwork is silver. A smooth body helps Spencer whiz down the tracks at top speed. Spencer has six large driving wheels to power him along. Spencer fun fact. Spencer once boasted that he didn't have a whistle but an electric horn. This isn't true because Spencer is a steamy and he really has a whistle. Slow Coach Diesel Gordon had just returned to the main station with the express. As he rolled into the yard, he heard Diesel grumbling to Fergus. Ha! You and your dirty, smoky funnel! I have to hurry off to the docks soon, frowned Diesel. I won't run well if you blow smoke all over me. It makes me cough and gets in my eyes. 
Sorry, puffed Fergus. I'm going to the docks too, he went on. Well, don't block the track when I come speeding past, sniffed Diesel. No fuss and no bother, just fast, clean speed. That's me. Psh, that Diesel's too big for his buffers, hissed Fergus. I wish I could race him to the docks. I think you can, whispered Gordon, as the Diesel went to fill up with oil. Fergus was puzzled. We must be quick while Diesel is out of sight, added Gordon. We'll need Rocky's help too. We'll show that newfangled Diesel, snorted Fergus. Before long, Diesel gave a loud blast on his two-tone horn. Then he gathered pace to run smoothly and speedily to the docks. But Fergus was already there. What kept you slow, coach? He teased. How did you get here so fast? Gasped Diesel, who stared in amazement. Oh, I may be small, but I'm not so slow, pipped Fergus. He went to see Gordon, who had hidden nearby. Diesel will never guess you rush me here on a flat truck, chuckled Fergus. We steamies are quick thinking too, grinned Gordon. Here's Thomas collecting Joby logs. Can you spot five differences in the image on the right? You have 30 seconds, but if you need more time, just pause the video. And here's all five differences. Did you spot them all? Oh, very well done. Now let's head to the seaside with Thomas and Percy. Rain or shine? One sunny morning, Thomas steamed out of the main station yard, past Percy. Pete, see you later, pit Thomas. I have to collect some new umbrellas and deliver them urgently. But it's so sunny, thought Percy, puzzled. Percy was coupled to some carriages. Then he set off too. He was taking some children to the beach. It's a lovely day for our trip to study the seashore, cried the school children excitedly to Percy as he pulled into the station. But Thomas has gone to fetch umbrellas. Percy thought to himself, confused. After dropping the children off, Percy was soon clattering along the coast. By the time he arrived, he was hotter than ever. We need some shade, grumbled the children. Just then, Thomas arrived. No one will want umbrellas, said Percy. It's not going to rain. I never said it would, smiled Thomas. People will want these umbrellas because it's so sunny. A porter fetched a trolley and after unloading them from Thomas, took them to a shop on the pier. Just in time, Thomas, called the owner as people hurried over to hire them. Percy stared in surprise. They're beach umbrellas, he gasped. The children hired some to sit under whilst they drew pictures of things they found on the beach. You tricked me, Thomas, huffed Percy. Don't get all steamed up, Thomas teased, or you'll need some shade to cool you down too. Fun fact, umbrellas come in all different shapes and sizes and fold up so you can carry them easily. Old umbrellas even used to have duck heads at the end of the handles. They can shade you from the sun or keep off the rain. The first folding umbrella was believed to have been used in China nearly 2,000 years ago.
The island of Sodor is home to many engines of different sizes, shapes and colours, and they all have different jobs to do at locations all over the island. Today it's time to look at one of these places. Let's go to the sawmill. The sawmill is on Misty Island near the Shake Shake Bridge. It is where tree trunks are cut into logs to be carried over to the mainland. When the logs have been cut up, they are loaded onto flatbed trucks pulled by the engines. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw are log loaders, but they are not very good at their job. Thomas took Edward to see the sawmill when they were collecting Joby wood. King Arthur I need a big reliable engine to take lots of equipment to the castle. The Fat Controller told Arthur one morning. I've chosen you because you have a spotless record. Thank you, sir, puffed the big tank engine proudly. I'll get everything there on time. Soon Arthur set off with lots of costumes. They were for the castle's special open day. Everyone dressed up in old-fashioned clothes for the medieval feast. There were knights in armour jousting on horseback too. Emily brought excited visitors to see all the castle's events. Arthur was standing in a siding nearby. It, it must, must be fun, fun to, to dress, dress up. up. The engines agreed. That night Arthur dreamt the engine shed was a castle. Next day he told Emily, who had an idea. She spoke to the Fat Controller. Splendid, he said. I'll get the engine crews to help, Emily. A week later something special arrived from the works for Arthur. It was a big golden cardboard crown. His crew fixed it around his funnel. Meanwhile a painted truck cover was hung over Emily's boiler case to look like a fine cloak. When the other engines had finished work, they lined up in the yard with their crews. Lady Hat had prepared lots of refreshments in the station buffet for everyone. Then the Fat Controller made an announcement. As you may know, Arthur and Emily took people to see knights in armour at the castle. Well, Emily wanted to put on a special event here at the station too. Emily smiled. Engines are made of metal, just like knights in armour, she said. So I'd like to tell you my olden day engine story. The audience listened eagerly as she began. Arthur rolled onto the turntable and slowly went around so that everyone could see his magnificent crown. <laughs> Two or three other engines wearing canvas cloaks joined in and gathered about the turntable. Emily's story was a huge success and everyone clapped and cheered. Well done, Emily and Arthur, said the Fat Controller. But what was the story called? King Arthur and his engines of the turntable, smiled Emily as Arthur chuckled. <laughs> If you liked what you heard, please consider leaving a like as well as commenting and subscribing. See you all again soon. Bye bye.